Hello and welcome to course polymer testing. This lecture will be about mechanical properties and in this part we are going to look at the introduction to mechanical properties and tensile strength. A product's condition or service and end usage. For example, some of the common products that we use in our daily life is something like a car dashboard, a bumper, a water bottle, a table, a chair. These all products they involve mechanical loading to a particular extent. Thus, they become immensely important for engineers which are involved in designing of the part. Such tests are carried out in standard laboratory conditions and hence actual long term and environmental exposure tests are of significance. Some of the important properties that of course we are going to look at, at as a part of this course include tensile strength, flexural strength, compressive strength, impact strength, creep, stress relaxation, hardness, wear resistance etc. Now let us look at what tensile test is all about. So the ASTM standard for tensile strength is ASTM D638 and the corresponding ISO standard is ISO 527-1. Now tensile strength elongation and tensile modulus properties are some of the basic physical properties of any polymer. It is the determination of the ability of any polymeric material to withstand forces which are pulling it apart and to know the extent till which the material is going to stretch before giving away. Tensile modulus also known as Young's modulus is calculated from a stress strain curve and it is indicative of the load bearing characteristics or the stiffness of a polymeric material. The plastics are very sensitive towards the rate of straining and environmental factors. Now you can see in the image the image denotes an, a UTM or a universal testing machine. So for tensile testing, the apparatus that we are going to use is a universal testing machine and it should have a constant rate of cross head movement. So you are going to see that there is going to be one fixed member and another movable member. So when we are talking about this constant rate of cross head movement, we are talking about the movable member. There are going to be grips on both the members and the grips are going to be self aligning in nature. There has to be a controlled velocity drive mechanism to move it up and down with a controlled rate that is the rate of strain. There has to be a closed loop servo controlled drive mechanism for a high degree of speed accuracy which is very important. There has to be a highly accurate load indicating mechanism. Then you need to have a extension indicator which is also commonly known as an extensometer. Now on this slide what you are seeing is two different images of an extensometer. So there is a clip extensometer and there is a video extensometer. Now extensometer as I have told you is primarily used for measuring the extension rate. Now we can see here there are different images that are there given for various jaws. So jaws as in for mounting the samples. So whenever we are talking about pulling the specimen apart, it has to be well clamped. Otherwise, there would be slippage. Now what flexural strength is? So flexural strength, which is also denoted by ASTM D790 and ISO 178 is the ability of a material to withstand bending or flexural forces when the forces are applied to the perpendicular direction of the longitudinal axis. So from an understanding perspective, the stresses induced by the flexural load are a combination of both compressive and tensile strength. So if we look at the animation which is given on the screen, what we can see here is if I divide my sample into two planes from the center, we might see that from the top bending movement which is happening, there is some sort of compression that is happening and the bottom part is sort of in the tensile motion, meaning that it is elongating or expanding. So that is why we, we call that it is basically a combination of a flexural force is a combination of both compressive and tensile forces. So how is the UTM apparatus different to the tensile test that we saw in the last part? So it primarily comprises of a deflection indicator instead of an extensometer that we had discussed. So deflection indicator is going to be giving you a measure of how much deflection the material is undergoing. It has a loading nose and there is a support on cylindrical surfaces and the radius has to be at least 1 by 8th inch. Now we look at the compressive test. Now compressive properties helps us in ascertaining the behavior of a polymeric material when subjected to a compressive load at a relatively low and uniform rate of loading. So compressive strength means 
the ability of the material to resist loads that bring about a reduction in size. So, we are talking about compressing the specimen which is opposite to the tensile strength resisting loads which are responsible for elongating the specimen. We are necessarily talking about compressing the specimen. So, if the failure during compressive testing is in the form of a shattering fracture that we can see in the image, the compressive strength has a definite value. Now, how is the apparatus different to that of tensile and flexural tests? So, there are flat platens on both the sides which are going to ensure parallel surfaces. Then again, there is a deflectometer which is used, right? So it will understand or it will measure the distance between the two plates when they are coming in close proximity to each other. So, there is another fixture which is very popular in testing. See the anti-buckling fixture with the sample that is clamped in the center of the anti-buckling fixture. So, impact strength testing in ASTM standard is carried out as per ASTM D256. So, the impact properties of polymeric materials are directly linked to the overall toughness of the polymer. So, whenever we say that the polymer is tough, it means that it has very good impact resistance. So, simply speaking, if we are talking about toughness, it is defined as the ability of the polymer to absorb applied energy. So, when exposed to mechanical testing, the area under the curve, which is the stress strain curve, is directly proportional to the toughness of the polymer. So, impact energy is the measure of toughness and the higher the impact energy of the material, the higher the toughness and vice versa. Now, we look at the pendulum impact testing, which consists of both the isode and the charpy values. So, the objective of the isode charpy test or a pendulum test is to measure the relative vulnerability of a standard impact strength test specimen to the pendulum type load. The results are expressed in terms of kinetic energy consumed by the pendulum to break the specimen. So, such energy is the total energy of the sample required to deform it, initiate the propagation and fracture the specimen and the one which is utilized in tossing away the broken end of the specimen. The energy lost through the friction and vibration of the apparatus is minimal for all practical purposes and may or may not be neglected depending upon the requirements or test conditions. Now we look at the hardness test. So how do you test the hardness of plastics? So hardness is the resistance of the material to localized plastic deformation, particularly indentation, scratching and or permanent deformation. So it's a purely relative term and it should not be confused with wear and abrasion resistance of the plastic materials. As hard materials easily fracture due to lower toughness, hardness is just one mechanical measurement and properties such as toughness and strength need to be given a thought while material selection. So the hardness test measures the penetration of an indenter into a polymer under specific time and force conditions. The resulting value is used to specify or identify a particular polymer's hardness or as a quality control measure on the variety of polymer samples. Now, when we look at hardness measurement methods, you would find there is something which is Rockwell hardness method. Then there is durometer hardness, which is Shore and Shore depending on whether you are having a, a soft, flexible and a rigid plastic. And there is Barcode hardness tester. So, we look at abrasion resistance tests now. So, it's a very complex subject. So, it is closely related to some of the factors like hardness, frictional force, load and how much area of contact is there. Any increase in the above factors results in an increase in the abrasion resistance values. It is also dependent upon the properties of the polymer, its resiliency, how resilient the polymer is and the type or the quantity of fillers or the additives that are being used. For instance, a harder material with considerable severities on the surface will undoubtedly cut through the surface of a softer material to an appreciable depth creating grooves and scratches. So, due to the buildup of high temperature zones, which are due to friction and these high temperature zones are going to be localized, you will also find that there is going to be oxidation in the surface. Now, oxidation results in weathering. So, this is going to be one form of weathering as well. Now, what is fatigue resistance? So, fatigue refers to the flexing, stretching, compressing or twisting behavior of materials under repeated cyclic loading. So, as a result of such repeated cyclic loading, mechanical deterioration and fracture eventually leads to failure in polymeric materials. The fatigue life of the test specimen is defined as the number of cycles 
of deformation necessary to cause failure of the test specimen under given oscillating conditions. So we are talking about cycles over here. So the failures that occur from repeated application of stress or strain are well below the ultimate strength of the material. And fatigue data are generally reported in terms of cycles to fail at a given maximum stress level. So there are three types of tests that can be employed to study the fatigue behavior of plastic materials. Now we are going to apply a load either in the form of flexural tension or compression. Right? And what we are going to do is we are going to apply that load cyclically. So you extend the specimen you are allowed to come to rest. So this is multiple cycles that is happening. So the flexural fatigue test is ASTM D671 whereas the tension and compression fatigue test is tested as per ASTM D7791A or B whether you are carrying out the test in the tension mode or the compression mode. Now there is another test which is a rotating beam test which is not popular for plastics due to the hysteresis that they offer. So plastics are used today in applications that require high reliability and performance. Many components that used to be metals are now made up of plastic. So as a result of long term loads and varying temperatures, it is vital to understand how plastics will behave. This behavior can be described by creep properties. So creep is nothing but time dependent deformation. So plastics material tend to deform rapidly to a strain roughly predicted by their stress strain modulus when subjected to a constant load. So how do they de behave differently when subject to a constant load in terms of the stress strain curve and then slowly with time until a rupture or yielding causes failure. Such phenomena of deformation under load with time is known as creep and all plastics will creep to a certain extent. So they are very sensitive to creep. Now we are going to see what stress relaxation is about. So the strain in the relaxation test is applied to a specimen at a constant rate to achieve the desired elongation. So once the specimen reaches the desired elongation, the strain is held constant for a predetermined amount of time. What we are going to observe is the decay in the stress value, which is occurring due to the relaxation of stress and it is observed over a function of time. So as time passes by, you would find that the stress is going to get relaxed. So a stress strain can be plotted by noting the stress strain value at different time intervals. So once you are starting the test, so you can see how much stress is being applied on the specimen with the load cell value. And what you are going to do is with passage of time, let us say at 30 minutes, you are going to plot one point. So this is the stress. So 50 is the stress value. So after one hour, let us say 45 is the stress value. After 1.5 hour, there is some 43 uh, is the stress value. You can make a curve with which you can understand at different points in time how the material is behaving in terms of stress relaxation. So the stress relaxation test can also be carried out at varying temperatures and strain values.